So I've gone over adding waveforms together, and unsurprisingly you can subtract them the same way, you just do it in reverse. You flip the waveform and add it, or just subtract the numbers, it's the same thing, because the other wave is acting in the reverse direction. But the point was not just to describe how waveforms combine naturally. There's something called the Fourier series, and you may have heard of things like the Fourier transformation or a spectrum analysis, which applies to sound, it applies to light, it applies to anything like that. Basically, you know you have a sine wave, and you can have a different frequency, different amplitude, and different phase of sine waves, and if you add them together, you make other waves. Every possible waveform is a combination of simple sine waves added together with different properties. The Fourier series is just codifying that. If you've ever heard of the Taylor series, it's similar to that, except Taylor series is polynomials. Your Taylor series is just a zero x to the zero plus a one x to the one plus a two x to the two plus da 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 da. A zero and so forth are constants. They're your coefficients. And just to be obvious, x to the zero, anything to the zero is one. Anything times one is just itself. And then x to the one is just x. So you might recognize that. Any function can be approximated to any degree of accuracy you like by just adding more terms. More terms, more terms, more terms. That's the Taylor series. The Fourier series is the same thing except with sine waves. So you could have a1 times sine of f1 times x plus p1. And I forgot the zero term, of course. A0 times sine of f0 times x plus p0. And it's just plus. Plus a2 times sine f2 times x plus p2. Da, da, da. And it's the same thing. Now, the frequencies are actually set for the normal Fourier series, just to keep things nice and simple. F0 equals 0, F1 equals 1, F2 equals 2. So your actual parameters are the amplitudes of the waves and the phases of the waves. And usually this is done with what's called complex numbers. During a fast Fourier transformation, we'll get there eventually. Right now, basically, F0 is just 0. F1 is 1, F2 is 2, and so forth. So if it's not intuitive why this is the frequency, so you're taking the sine over x, so x goes from 0 to 2 pi, and that's your sine. 0, pi, 2 pi. If you're multiplying 2 by x, you're getting there twice as fast. Every time your x is pi, it's actually taking the sine of 2 pi. So if you were dividing x by 2, then you would have to get to 4 pi of x before it was actually 2 pi. So multiplying the x in a sine is the frequency. Well, 0 times x is 0. The sine of a constant number is a constant times a constant. So we could just call this, since it's all one number that doesn't change when x does, we'll just call it b. That's called the bias. Basically, you've got your wave, and it's up or down. The whole thing shifted. That's your bias. Perfectly, usually, your bias will be zero. That's the ideal. It's not always going to be that way. But the bias is just the up and down, because you're adding a constant number to everything. And then 1 times x is just x, 2 times x, and so forth. So it's the same thing. You just add these up. So why don't I actually show you this in action? So before I begin, I should point out what the purpose of explaining this to you is. So we have here a regular sine wave. Now let's say we wanted a square wave. Well, that is impossible. Let's say you have this voltage, and then you want to switch to this voltage. This is one instant in time. It's a vertical line. You can't just immediately snap and change that voltage. There's going to be some approximation. But in addition, you need different circuitry and different coding, if you're doing it digitally, to make a square wave as close as you can. You could make it close, but to make it close as you can, you need something different than to make a sine wave. And then what about a triangle wave? So fairly easy, a nice linear drop-off, but that drop-off's not going to be perfect. Nothing is perfect in life. And it's very hard to get a nice straight line like this with any electric components. They tend to have ramps. It might be like a weird little curve. And also, this transition won't be anywhere near as sharp. And, in addition, to make circuitry that gets as close as you can, you need different circuitry than the sine wave and the square wave, and again with the sawtooth wave. You'd make all these different circuits to make these different waves, and then you'd have to have different parts to adjust them and all this other stuff. But, 
if you make sine waves, and you make a lot of them, and you just make the circuitry to combine them, you can actually just adjust that circuitry to make these waves fairly close, because they wouldn't be perfect anyway. So we just have a different approximation that gets as close as we need by adding more sine waves. That's one reason. The other reason is an equalizer. So you know how you have your stereo, and you can turn up the bass, or turn up the treble, or whatever? Well, the Fourier series is low frequency and then higher and higher and higher and higher. So if you take whatever your music sample is and split it into sine waves, low frequency, medium frequency, high frequency sine waves, then you just take, let's say, the low ones, the low frequency, that's your bass. You take the low frequency ones, amplify just those, and then you smush it all together again. You don't change the middle and high frequencies, but you make the low frequencies louder, higher amplitude, and then add them together again, and you get a reconstituted waveform which has the base frequencies adjusted or let's say you want to filter out noise so let's say you have a sample which is speech plus noise but then you take part where it's silent right in between words and then you split up just that part you just take the part that's nothing but noise and you split it into all of these different sine waves just for the noise then you go into your full sample, split that up into its sine waves, and then take away the sine waves from the noise. This is not perfect. If you do it wrong, you can add artifacts, but it will diminish the noise. And if you are gentle with it, it won't reduce your audio quality that much. So it can be used for noise removal and an equalizer and for creating arbitrary waveforms. You can also use it for analysis. This is how they find out what elements are in a sample, a physical sample. What chemical elements? They use light, which is waves, electromagnetic waves, and they split up light into its frequencies and see which frequencies are there. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. So let me show you how you do it. So let's have a simple sine wave. And let me change these axes. So we start at zero and then four pi. So that's two of them. And then we go from minus one to one. So this is a regular sine wave because one times x is x. Sine of x over one is sine of x. So this is just sine of x. Two of them goes from zero to two pi, that's six and a quarter as its wavelength, from minus one to one as its amplitude. They call that an amplitude of one, peak to peak of one. So what if we have a different wave? What if instead of one, we have three? So look what happens here. Remember adding waveforms? On this side, this is going to go up sharper. Think about our square wave. We want a square wave that goes up here, and then down here, then up here, down here, up here, down here. So vertical lines about here, and horizontal lines about here. So we're taking this line on this sine wave, and we're adding to it, we're making it sharper, and I don't know why it keeps doing that. That's why it keeps doing it. Perils of a trackpad. Well, now I know better how to be careful. Anyway, so we want to make this line sharper here to make it go up earlier. And here, we're adding again. It's going to go down slower, more to the right. Now, what about the middle? The middle, this is going to come down. And you might say, well, that's not good. We want the sides to go up. We don't want the middle to go down. But... You'll see in a minute why that works. Down here on the other side, they're both negative, so they're still contributing in the other direction. So let me show you the combined form. So see here? This one here is the combined form. The left side is going up more sharply, where it's adding. Let me get rid of that. The left side is going up more sharply. The right side is going down more sharply, and the middle just kind of dipped. So that's not useful. But what if we take this, let's sharpen it again. Let's do five. So this is a smaller wave yet. Every wave we're adding gets smaller because we don't want to modify this whole thing like crazy. We're just adjusting it. And luckily we don't have to have a phase, and the frequencies are simple, and we're just skipping two and four and six for this particular wave. But look here. See, we're going to sharpen this side again because it's going up. We're going to sharpen this side, sharpen this side, and in the middle, here, you see where it's low? We're adding. So this little nubbin is going to go up a little bit. This up here, see this is negative here. So this little nubbin and this little nubbin will come down a little bit. So we're gonna shove this up and shove this down. Imagine sculpting the waveform like clay. That's what we're doing. So let's add it, see? Let me go ahead and separate these so it's easier to see. So this is the one that we had before with the one dip. And now you can see, this got sharper and that got sharper. This came down a bit, that went up a bit. And it's at a lower amplitude. See, the little bits are up here and down here, and these are higher up, and that's lower down. So these sides are getting closer to vertical lines, and we're smushing this into a horizontal line. So let's do this 
in a more clear way. So what do I have here? I have my sine wave again. The 2i plus 1 is just supposed to be i, but in this program I don't know how to make this go by 2, because I want to have i be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, but I can only make it be like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this just changes it to 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So ignore the 2i plus 1. This is just sine of x, sine of 3x over 3, sine of 5x over 5. All right, you can see it. This is one term, 2, 3. See, that's where we were before. Let's add another. See, the sides keep getting sharper. The middle gets smushed. And as we get a little more, we can see we're getting these little horns. But this part in the middle is getting flatter. These parts are getting more vertical. And these horn parts are being shoved to the side. Watch as I add a few more. See, they're getting shoved over. So the part that's really close to flat is getting wider. So yes, we have the horns. And as we can see, if we add a whole 50 terms, it keeps getting better and better and better and better. All the way out here, if you pull back from your screen, it looks pretty square-like. We've got these horns, but the more waves we add, the shorter the horns are in time, because the horizontal axis is time. So it's a bit of a spike, but it's still a good approximation because the spike is very short, and you can add as many waves as you want. So this is how you take sine waves, and you add more and more and more and more to make a square wave, or any wave you want. So about filtering. Remember high pass and low pass filters? A high pass filter allows high frequencies to pass, hence the name. A low pass filter allows the low frequencies to pass, blocks the high ones. So let's say this was your audio signal in your stereo for whatever reason. Let's say you had a square wave and you want to make the square wave more bassy, right? Or rather less trebly. You want to filter out the high frequencies. So you do a low pass filter. So you want the low frequencies to stay and the high frequencies to go. Well, the higher the I, the higher the frequency. Remember, we're multiplying by X. So let's remove high frequencies. You can see you can filter a square wave into a sine wave. And it makes intuitive sense. Because look at the sine wave. Look at the square wave. Look at them back and forth. They are similar shapes, aren't they? The sine wave has an up here and a down here. The sine adds most of the body to it. So if we're removing the high frequencies, the little itty bitty things, see? Because they're very low amplitude. They're modifying the sine wave only a little bit. So if we move the high frequencies, we get back to the base, which is high amplitude. What about a high pass filter? High pass means the higher frequencies will be allowed through. The lower frequencies will be removed. If we do that, oh, remember? The lowest frequency was the most meaningful, the highest amplitude. It was our sine wave. And if we keep going, filtering out low frequencies, we're getting pulses. See? Because we have our sine wave, and as we add more high frequencies, they're less impactful, but basically they're sharpening it. That's what they're doing. They're flattening the middle, they're sharpening the edges, and adding those horns. So if we take away everything but the sharpening, just the sharpening, you can see it has the greatest impact at these points. See this point here? The most amplitude of the high frequencies is here. But if we look at our sine wave, see, this is where it needs most of the change. The middle doesn't need that much. This part here is where it needs all that sharpening, and that's what the high frequencies are doing. They have more of an impact, so they are what's left over. And then as you remove them, they go down and down and down. And this is why you can't filter too much, because as you see, they're going lower. And you say, but we can just amplify. We can make these taller. But you'd make this taller too. So you're basically adding noise, because if you amplify, you amplify the noise. It's called signal-to-noise ratio. Here's your signal. Here's your noise. If we put some low frequencies back in, we are increasing the signal-to-noise ratio. The signal is so much louder than the noise. But if we go down way far, it's hard to tell the signal from the noise anymore. And if we just have one high-frequency signal, it's just a tiny, adorable little sine wave. That's high-pass and low-pass filtering. And you can see, if we take away just that, but what is that? Sine of x. All I've done is remove sine of x when i here is 0, so that becomes 0, that becomes 1, so sine of x. See? If you take this and this, you can see they cancel out back into flatness, right? See? See how we do? We have just the sine wave, and then we take that sine wave and modify it, and then remove the sine wave again. So that's how it works. That is the Fourier series. That is filtering. We'll get into spectral analysis and all of that in the future. The main purpose of this was to get the concept of waves as constituent parts in your mind. Like Lego blocks, like clay, like whatever you want to think of. Any complex wave is just parts, and you can separate it, 
modify them, and put them back together again. And this is going to come up again and again and again in signal processing and signal analysis. Many videos over the coming months and years, in fact, no one can see that far into the future to see where this channel will be by then. We'll just be taking it one step at a time. So keep these signals in your mind as separable and recombinable. So when I explain it later, I won't have to go over all this every time. I can just talk about removing higher low frequencies or amplifying high frequencies. When I'm talking about noise and removing noise with bypass capacitors, that's another signal filtering. Remember how your Fourier series has the bias at the start, which just moves it up and down. Well, what if you have only the bias? What if there is no sinusoidal component beyond that first one? That's a DC signal. But then you have noise that's making it jiggly. But if you separate that noisy DC signal into a Fourier series and try and de-amplify everything that's not the bias, so a super low-pass filter, there you go. So now it makes sense to you. I recommend walking around the internet. Get lost on Wikipedia a little bit. I'll be going over pieces of this as we go along, but I'm not going to go into super in-depth math analysis. This is mostly an electronics channel with a math minor, if you will. Perhaps in the future I'll split it off and start doing some more math stuff too, because I love math. Math is fun. I'm a fan of the Number File channel on YouTube. Brady and all of his on-camera joyful people. But for now, we're going to stick to the physical bits and using the Fourier series more than analyzing it. So until then, be seeing you.